Hello, welcome back to the channel. You join me and Taylor Hetherington of Taylor Made Cars back for another video. Uh, if you don't recognize these cars behind me, then here's a quick catch up. Headlights need a bit of a polish up. That's not. Nice. There's gotta be something very wrong with it though. It's so classy, that thing. That is, it just screams this money. 775 it is, it goes away once, no. twice, provisionally sold then at 775. Yeah! <laughs> we said two cents, do we want it? I don't want it, do you want it? No. Oh, it's smoking a lot. It's just, oh my God, it's smoking a lot. Oh my God, it is smoking a lot. Today, we are embarking on a road trip to Blackpool. Yeah, I got it mixed up with Liverpool. Did you? Yeah, I told everyone we were going to Liverpool. Well, same, same. Yeah, yeah. I think they have the same kind of accent. Anyway, the reason that we're going to Blackpool is because A, it's a long way and it's a good way to test these cars and B, because Taylor loves going on roller coasters. So we're definitely going to be doing that. In the no, oh. just no. Oh. I hate them. Excellent. In the meantime, you have had to do some work to these cars to get them more road legal, right? So let's start with the BMW. What work have you done to that? Nothing. Perfect. Let's start with my Range Rover. What have you done to that? Everything. Perfect. <laughs> so what we're going to be doing is leaving here your unit and then driving up to Liverpool. We're going to take in some scenery, have some laughs, and um, we're just going to Go on an adventure. Yeah, and some lunch. Don't forget the lunch. Yeah, we need to have some I lunch. I want lunch. And um, yeah, fingers crossed, the Range Rover makes it 100 yards down the road. I doubt it. Okay, perfect. Uh, we, I've, I've got to a point now where I'm so over Range Rovers. I've driven both of these over the past week, and this has been absolutely perfect, and this has been absolutely terrible. So it suffered with a turbo hose that I've replaced, a gearbox judder, a rear brake seizing on, a ball joint which had completely collapsed, cruise control stopped working and then it started working again and the horn stopped working and then it started working. It, I, I took it to Norwich and it just it went into limp mode over and over and over and over and over again. But like you said apart from that it's been smooth sailing with the Range Rover for which we only paid £2,000. Yeah. So we're going to embark on a four or five hundred mile journey now. What could possibly go wrong? Should we get cracking? Yeah. Okay. Before we set off though, our tracking car, which happens to be Rory's rather tasty 535D, has thrown up a warning light, so we need to find out what's wrong. Which brings me nicely onto this week's video sponsor, Carly. With Carly, you can take back control of your car by diving into its diagnostics to get a complete overview of your vehicle's health. Simply plug the scanner into the OBD2 port, open the app, and Carly will reveal all. As you can see, Rory's 535D has issues with the DPF, but nothing that will affect the car's performance. On top of diagnosing issues, Carly also enables you to unlock hidden features or change settings to customize some cars, this 535D included. So say you want USDM side markers, a few clicks on the Carly app, and hey presto, job done. Another option Rory specifically wanted was for his indicators to flash five times. Again, with Carly, this hidden feature was unlocked in seconds. So if you want to get in-depth diagnostics, see live engine data, code your car and more, then Carly is the tool for you. What's more, you can get 15% off Carly if you follow the link below and use the code AUTOALEX at checkout. Right then, let's hit the road. Here we go. Blackpool, here we come. We need to fill up with fuel soon because I only have a quarter of a tank, which means I'll probably run out in about 10 minutes. All right, Taylor, so it's been, what, 10 minutes on some pretty fun twisty B roads. How is WOM, the 520D, coping? It's actually really nice, to be fair. It holds the road really well. It definitely doesn't feel like it's done 181,000 miles. It's really good. What's the Range Rover like, Alex? Do you know what? The Range Rover is, is pretty epic. Uh, the little fixes that you've done have really tarted it up a little bit, and I've got a bit more confidence in it now. It is very wallowy through the corners, but in a straight line. It's very quick, it's very luxurious. It is every bit 
of Range Rover that I was expecting. And for, you know, for two grand, you can't you can't get more car for the money, can you? Yeah, it's still got a quarter of a tank, which uh, I'm impressed with, considering we have done 10 minutes of driving. <laughs> well, that's good. Let's just hope it makes the rest of the journey. I'm skeptical at this point. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Cool, anyway, onwards. All right, so Taylor, I've just had a thought. You know how um, how you really don't like going on roller coasters? Yes. Well, we need to fill up with fuel, and I've got a little challenge for you. Do you want to hear it? I don't really like where this is going. All right, so my plan is, right, you have got quite a fuel-efficient 520D. It weighs probably, what, 1.5 tonnes. Me, meanwhile, I've got a slab-sided Range Rover with an extra ton, ton and a half, double the displacement, an extra turbo, very fuel inefficient. So my thinking is, if you can get double, that is double the fuel economy on our way up, then I will not make you go on a single ride, and that's a promise. Challenge accepted. I'm changing my driving style and I'm now driving incredibly efficiently, so I don't have to go on that roller coaster. Okay then, Taylor, uh, with your challenge accepted, at the next fuel station, let us pull in, fill up, brim the cars, and uh, by the time we're in Blackpool, we'll find out who's won. Bring it on, you're on. Challenge accepted, you're gonna lose. Ho <laughs> ho Right, so I've got about a quarter of a tank. I don't know how big these fuel tanks are, 80, 90 litres, we're about to find out. Um, also, as I was driving just now, it said uh, check brake fluid level. So, um, there's another thing to add to the list. Brilliant. We're only about 30 miles down the road as well. Great cars though. How far into our journey are we? So we are approximately 30 minutes into our journey and I've already got a warning light for a brake fluid. Right. Or lack thereof. This is not a good start. No, because you topped it up before I, we left. I did. Oh. Oh yeah, that's low. Is it? So we've literally it, done 30 minutes. Where's it coming from? Do we know? No idea. Oh Taylor. Hello. The sill looks a little bit moist. Does it? Maybe all the brake fluid is just sitting in the sill and there's a little hole in it. Just uh, this up here oh. looks quite moist, yeah. does it not? Oh, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Is that a hard line then? Yeah, it looks like. Oh. Well, it was a hard line, it is now a soft line. What were we saying about Range Rovers? Shit cars. <laughs> oh, no. I wonder what they're not under here. Oh no. Oh my god. That's not gone well. Yeah? Look at that, Rory. This is our problem. Oh no. The brake pipe there has gone boom. All of the brake fluid has come out. Uh, How's it managed that? Wow. Look, Rory, come around this side and look how rusty it is here. It hasn't burst here. Wow. But just stick your nugget up there, look. Oh you, wow. Look how rusty those brakes are. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Just think, that could have burst a year ago. It could have burst in a year's time. It could have burst any time, but it chose to burst. Today. Today, while well, that was at the wheel. I wonder why. Remove. So to do this job properly, we need to basically cut the pipe he pipes here, at this end. Yeah. Remove the pipes. Wee. Take the fuel tank shield down yeah. and find out where they're rusty to, which is probably all the way to the back of the car, to be honest, and replace the lines and then drive to Blackpool. Cool. Which is another job for me to do this week if I haven't done enough work on this poxy Range Rover. Someone get Taylor a wambulance. <laughs> wow. Anyway. Um, I've got brake fluid in my eye. This is now last week. So let's go back to the present. We're still so it is a new week and as you can see the Range Rover is here and it is now fixed. Yes. Your mate Giuseppe 
Yeah. From AJ. JA Motors. JA Motors. Working hard last night, wasn't he? Yeah, until about 12 o'clock at night. And we found out what the problem was. What was that? We took away the German engineering. Oh, bloody hell. So we need to, um, how does this go on? Yeah, just like that. Yeah, just, just like just that. Just push it in. There we go. So it wasn't the brake pipes after all. It was just the fact that this Range Rover was no longer a Mercedes. Yeah, so now it will be fine. Now we're good to go. All right, let's hit the road. Okay, so the uh, repairs to the Range Rover run a little deeper than just putting on the Mercedes badge on the front because uh, Giuseppe or Joe, one of Taylor's mates, he was working pretty much all night yesterday replacing all of that side of the brake lines. They were completely rotten. The subframe had to come out. The fuel tank had to come out. So yeah, it was a really, really big job and probably a job that any other owner would have just said, nah, screw it, just chuck it back in the auction. I don't want to know about it. But here we are, the car is repaired, and now nothing can go wrong. <laughs> right? The Range Rover hasn't got a very good track record so far, but we'll see. As for the 5 Series, it's spot on as usual. Not a problem. I haven't got a single worry about this car. It's going to be absolutely fine. <laughs> We've made it to Blackpool. <laughs> well, not quite. We've, we've done... made it 25 miles. Is it 25 miles yeah. we've done? That's quite a lot. I'm hungry, we need to have some lunch. The door doesn't lock, so I've had to park right next to it. And stop. Oh! <laughs> we still want to do, you have to get double the MPG, yeah? Shake on it. All right, and then no roller coaster, but if you, fail, you have to go on double roller coasters. No. No seatbelts. No. Yeah. That wasn't the agreement. I'm paying. So we sat here at, well, 57 miles an hour because Alex has got in his head that he's going to beat me on this MPG challenge. It's not going to work and sitting at 57 miles an hour is not going to work. We're never going to get there at this rate. He's actually, as we speak, slipstreaming a boat. He is literally slipstreaming a boat. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. We're never going to get there at this rate. Hello Taylor, welcome back. Where have you been? I wouldn't be surprised if you if you stopped over and you you filled up with fuel and you pumped up your tires to 100 psi. Do you know what? I didn't even think of that, but that is quite a good idea. I might do that at the next junction. All right. Um, speaking of MPG, mine has gone up quite a quite a way. What are you at? And what what are you at? Tell me what you're at first. Go on, go on. Spill the beans. All right, fine. Because uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not afraid. I'm not shy. 37.8. No way are you doing 37 miles to the gallon. You are lying. Well, yeah, I'm not doing 37. I'm doing 37.8. And I will be seeing 38 soon. Are you sure you're not looking at the average speed? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I'm very, very much not impressed with this. All right, what are your numbers? Talk to me. So the BMW is doing very well. It's currently averaging 60.1 miles to the gallon. Oh, I, I didn't even think it would get into the 60s, but fair play, that's pretty good going. You kind of resigned yourself to the fact that you are gonna be screaming and shitting yourself on a roller coaster tomorrow morning. And I'm not looking forward to that. It's, it's just not happening. It can't happen because you'll be covered in vomit, I'll pass out and I will probably shit myself as well. Oh God, that, that'll make for good TV though, won't it? <laughs> you are not wrong. All right, should we do another, what, 50 miles or so and then we'll, uh, and then we'll fill up again and see how we've done? No, 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 we, we've got to get to the Peak District first. We've got to mix up the driving a bit. We've got to do a bit of motorway driving and a bit of, you know, country driving as well, just, just to see how they fare on fuel economy. 
All right, I'm confident anyway, so uh, let's do it. Oh uh, yeah, if you overtake me now just for the shot. <laughs> Very nice, thank you, Taylor. Um, I didn't need the shot at all. I'd already stopped rolling. You are an asshole. <laughs> I can't actually believe what I'm witnessing. We're an hour and a half into our journey and I've been caught up by the man with the boat. <laughs> that just shows you how slow we've actually been going. We've been overtaken by a boat. With Taylor clearly less than impressed with my hypermiling, we headed into the center of Sheffield where the Range Rover's MPG would likely take a nosedive. Okay, so we have just made it into Sheffield, the lovely city of Sheffield. I've never actually been to Sheffield. I can't say it's lovely or not. Um, but it looks all right. Um, there's lots of hills, there's lots of traffic, there's lots of maniacs in their BMWs. Taylor is one of them. And um, yeah, MPG is suffering. I'm down to, down to 38.3. I was around 38.7, 38.8. So half an MPG, oh, 38.2. Uh, it's only going to get worse. So I need to just take it nice and slowly, okay? Oh, oh God, the gearbox is having a bit of a shit fit. It doesn't like that. Gearbox is very jittery when it's... Ah, what are you doing? What are you doing? Apart from that, yeah, all good. Um, Taylor, how's your MPG doing? I'm, I'm suffering a wee bit. I'm down to 38.1. Mine's still good. Mine's at 60.1 still at the moment. I told you this is where the Range Rover's MPG is going to start to drop. Yeah, but you need to get me down to 30, and that ain't happening. Oh, I don't know. We're going to start getting hilly. No, we're in a city. Yeah, but it's a hilly city. Yeah, I have actually noticed that. With Sheffield almost behind us, the next stop on our journey were the beautiful winding roads of the Snake Pass, which would soon test one of our cars to near breaking point. Taylor, can you believe it that not only we, but the Range Rover has made it to Snake Pass? I know, I can't believe it. And to be honest, there's nothing really wrong with it either, is there? No, and I'm still doing 35.5 MPG. Um, when we did just pull over, did you notice something with your BMW, Taylor? Yeah, I, I must admit, it does sound like it has a slight rattle from the engine area. Um, when we next stop, I just need to check to see what it is. I'm hoping it's just a heat shield rattle. Yeah, it didn't really sound like heat shield rattle though, did it? Wouldn't it be funny if the Range Rover was the reliable one out of the two? Don't even get me started. Damn, it would not be funny. But before we'd investigate the BMW's engine troubles, we reached the peak of Snake Pass, where Rory told us to get out of our cars and head on foot up a mountain. Oh, oh, oh my knee's not in a good way. I need a knee replacement. Beep, oh. beep, <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Oh. Oh, <laughs> did you see that, Rory? I've I got my four-wheel drive shoes on. As we climbed further, it quickly became clear why we'd been brought up here. So we've just arrived um, at the wreckage of the B29 Super Fortress named Overexposed. This crashed on the 3rd of November 1948, killing all 13 crew members. And it crashed as it was descending through, um, through cloud. So this is, yeah, effectively a memorial site, also a crash site. You can see one, two, three, four radial engines and utter carnage. It's it's an amazing place to be, but it's also really quite all, sad yeah, as well. All jokes aside, this yeah. is a pretty unbelievable place yeah. really, isn't it? Because it's nice to see the engineering and to be able to touch stuff like this, but at the same time, 13 people died. So it's, I think it's a really great place to come. Just take a few pics, spend a little bit of time. Don't take anything with you. I think people probably have over the years, but yeah, it's definitely worth a walk, isn't it? It's very surreal. It almost feels as if someone's put all of this stuff here. Yeah. It's hard to imagine this being a complete aircraft and crashing in it. It's yeah. Unbelievable. Like, where, where is the rest of it? Yeah. But there's some bits of it 
that are really intact they're hardly corroded at all yeah and you wouldn't think it's been here for what 70 odd years 70 80 years yeah it's unbelievable really yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah just um have a look around and then, after making our way back down the mountain, it was finally time to investigate the BMW's engine, which was sounding a little worse for wear. And it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, ask the auxiliary belts on the under tray. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. You don't want that there. Oh, no. Mm. All right, should we get to the hotel? Well, we'll try. Otherwise, we'll all jump in the Range Rover, the most reliable car here. No. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, well, there's a turnout for the books. Um, Taylor's 520D, not doing too well at the moment. How oh, the tables have turned. <laughs> the noise, I think, could be the crankshaft pulley because only half of the auxiliary belt is currently attached. The other half sat on the under tray. It's a bit of a shame because I thought this was going to be the most reliable of the pair. I really, really need this to just hold up because if it does break down, I'm never going to hear the end of it from Alex. We've got about an hour left until we get to Blackpool, until we get to the hotel. So I'm just going to take it easy, just be gentle with the old girl and uh, see how we get on. All right then, Taylor, it is now um, D-Day for you. We are going to fill up and see how much fuel we have used. Um, you, remember, need to get twice the MPG as me. Um, if you do that, then you don't end up on the uh, on the Big Dipper or whatever rides there are tomorrow. So um, let's fill up and find out. How are you feeling? Are you feeling confident? Um, not that confident, I'm not going to lie. But let's have a look. Let's, let's see. Right, so no matter how many litres I've done, Taylor, you need to have done half my amount, OK? Wait. Ah, oh, 24.98. I'll give you that. 25 litres. So you need to have done no more than 12 and a half litres. Oh, oh no. there we go. Oh, the <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Yes, oh. yes. I've done it. I've won. But by how much? Oh, not a lot, not a lot, not a lot. 15.92 versus 25. Okay, so we've just filled up and uh, Taylor, we know that your fate tomorrow is to, uh, is to, to go on a roller coaster, which is fun. Um, but let's dig a little deeper. Rory, what were the actual MPG figures? So Alex, you achieved 33.6 miles per gallon. Ooh. Taylor, you achieved 52.8 miles per gallon. That's actually pretty good going because my car says uh, 34.1 mpg. What was your um, reading on the BMW, Taylor? Mine's currently showing 52.3 miles to the gallon. Okay, so the BMW is actually really accurate. The, um, the Range Rover overreads, but only very slightly. I think overall we can be really happy. I'm really impressed actually with 52 or over 52 for the BMW. That's good going, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. I mean, when I was on the motorway, I was getting 60.1, which was really good. I'm, I'm a bit disappointed that it's dropped a bit, but 52 is still really good. I'll go with that. All right, well, it's a straight run to the hotel and then let's go for dinner. See you in a bit. By the way, we have arrived at the Grey's Hotel. This is our resting place for tonight. We've made it! How amazing is that? This is nice. It, it, it reminds me of that hotel out of the Only Falls and Horses when, um, when the coach blew up. After we hunkered down for the night, the only thing on Taylor's mind was the action-packed events that would follow in the morning. It is 
it's now the next day and as you can see, we are at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Oh! And we're going to get started on in Eugeon. I'm going to go to the noodle bar and then uh, I'm going to just pop into the log flume. Okay, and I'll come back straight after, after we've been on Infusion. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on Taylor. Let's get going. Let's go Infusion. Come on. Oh, I genuinely don't like it. Oh, Layla, look at the camera. Yeah? <laughs> oh, f oh, f oh, f oh, f Here we go. Oh, Here we go. God. Oh, God. Here we go. How was that, Taylor? That is what I can only describe as unpleasant. It was not hard. Nice. I've got pins and needles in my fingers and my cheeks. I think I'm dying. Yeah? I think I'm going to pass out. Do we out. leave you here for the rest of the day? Yeah, yeah, okay. just leave me here. I'm going to go um, on the log flume and I'm going to get some churros. Okay, nice. I enjoyed it. No matter what it looked like, I wasn't scared. <laughs> he shit himself. I did see yeah, it. A bit of food came out. With Taylor's pants now a different colour, I thought the best remedy would be to let him sit and relax. On one more ride. Oh my god, I am not looking Oh god, don't look down. Do not look down. Okay, now I was feeling worse for wear, so I left it in Taylor's capable hands to choose the next attraction, which went predictably. Right, so we have now dominated Blackpool Pleasure Beach. We've had a good time, haven't we? How are you feeling? I'm all right. I feel a bit ruined. I'm not going to lie, I feel very wobbly, but I'm, I'm all right. Yeah. So Blackpool Pleasure Beach is actually a lot better than any of us expected. So if you're in Blackpool, then definitely check it out. Although it is very expensive. 46 pounds per person. That's a lot yeah, of Yeah, I thought that was a lot as yeah, well. Yeah, so maybe book ahead, but um, yeah, loads of really cool rides. Um, as for us now, we're gonna go and get some chish and fits. Yeah. And then we'll head home. As we tucked into our fish and chips, it gave us some time to reflect on our cheap auction cars and the adventure we'd just been on. Just two weeks earlier, we bought two cars we knew almost nothing about, except for the fact that they'd be cheap and most likely plagued with problems. Either way, the experience of buying these cars was worth the breakdowns alone. Such was the fun of exploring the cars and the camper van, as well as bidding, running around in high heels, and discovering a bag of condoms in the back of another Range Rover. What followed was an epic 500 mile round trip, which included expected Range Rover repairs, a BMW breakdown, and a Taylor meltdown. But would you believe it? All of our cars made it home in one piece. I guess the moral of the story is this. Yes, buying interesting cars from an auction is great fun, but when you find a car whose price seems too good to be true, then keep a little cash handy for repairs if and when they occur. So would I do it again? Hell yes.